I've just replaced the rear springs on my Brera because they had broken and uh, if you look in there you can see the coilovers with the springs on the shocks you have to remove the shock and, and uh, spring as, as an assembly and then take the spring off the coilover which is pretty standard it's held in a fairly standard manner and you need to release the bolt that holds the bottom of the shock absorber to the arm the bottom of the drop link and this top um, suspension arm which has an adjustable bolt on it and you need to mark the positions carefully before you take it off because you've got to put it back in exactly the same place otherwise you screw up the geometry um, there's a bit more to it than that though unfortunately you need to get inside the car remove the trim and uh, get to that nut that is not going to focus for me is it that nut that's on the top of the strut otherwise you can't withdraw it from the car that's a bit of a faff and I've taken the whole of the interior out um, I think it varies from one model to another but the Brera I think you need to take it all out I think you might be able to do it from the front backwards on other models why do the springs break well good question this has been picked up on the MOT and the uh, they've both broken in the same place and coincidentally it's around about the end of the spring so what's clearly happening is that spring at that point is bending over as it binds over the end of the cut end of the spring and it's causing a stress point and it breaks them on both sides maybe that's a bit of a design issue but this car's done 100,000 miles this must have occurred in the last uh, three or four thousand miles I hadn't noticed it it was picked up on the MOT to my shame I hadn't noticed it but I did notice a bit of noise coming from the back and I thought it was just the joints needed a bit of a freshen up anyway um, it's pretty much back together the biggest problem you're gonna have if you're doing this job is getting things undone because you know it's probably been there a while and it's a I had a bit of a hard time cracking off the nuts and getting the bolts out particularly the bottom the bottom bolt at the bottom of the shock absorber seems to be put in the wrong way and I put it back in a different way and the um, these drop links there's no flats on the inside so you have to put an allen key in there and it's never enough because uh, these do seize and you can't get them undone and in the end I cut the nut off with an angle grinder teasing it along until I just got down to tops of the threads to weaken it and then I took it off with a nut runner so you know there are other videos on YouTube showing you how to do this um, there's one from order dock I wouldn't trust their torque settings um, I've been trying to find out what the torque settings are uh, Neil at Italia Autos does one I've done it exactly the same way as he's done it I don't think Neil possesses a torque wrench <laughs> doesn't seem to uh, use them on jobs like this um, uh, the uh, yes I would say the auto dock is you know it's quite good but they take off more than you need to and the torque settings I think are not correct in all instances so uh, there we are I'm about to put the interior back into the car and that'll be fun I thought I'd leave it doing all the hard work I got really tired doing this because it's you know the quoted time for this job I think is two hours and I'd like to use, you know you, you put into case for a two-hour job and you come back with a much bigger bill than you expected because it took them a lot longer because they couldn't get stuff out and uh, you know when you've got a, a bolt that is seized inside a bush it it can make things really difficult so anyway you have been warned patience is a virtue as they say thanks for watching